I have received word of a strange invention. What it can do will amaze science and strike terror to the world. Two thousand plus science fiction adventures from the world of tomorrow, the years beyond 2000 A.D. Two thousand plus presents the insect. <laughs> Wonderful news, darling. It means I'll probably get that research appointment at the university. Oh, I can hardly believe it, George. Oh, here's the telegraph of the Dean of Science himself. I'll take the jet plane in about two hours and be there in plenty of time for my meeting this afternoon. I know. I'll get a bottle of champagne and we'll celebrate at dinner tonight. Well, that's nice, but <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be home for dinner. Oh? The meeting may go on. Maybe I'll have to stay overnight, take the plane back in the morning. Well, then we'll have champagne for breakfast. Well, let's not hope too much. Hey, 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 I've got to gather my papers and things while I'm going to get to the airport in time. You'd better help me. In your laboratory? Oh, now, look. The wife of a budding scientific genius shouldn't act like that. But, George, I'm frightened when I go in there. Nonsense. They won't hurt you. No, I can't stand in there. That's why I stay out of your life. I've got to have help with these papers. What do you want me to do? Cancel the meeting because my wife is afraid of the work I do? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. It's... Just... All right, all right. I'll try to do it myself. Oh, don't be angry, George. If they were ordinary insects, tiny ones were... Maybe it would be different. Even with what I've done to them, they're not so big. So I've taken a spider, a house fly, and a wasp, and by means of my growth ray, I've made them larger. The spider still isn't any bigger than my fist. The house fly is about as large as a pack of cigarettes. The wasp no bigger than a golf ball. They're not giants. But they look so... So horrible when they're even that big. Easier to observe and study. That's why the university is interested in my work. With a long-term appointment and a grant to amplify the growth ray, maybe I can really increase the size of the insect. Imagine a fly as big as a horse. That would be some horse fly. Hey, that's a joke. All right, George. I'll help you. It's only the papers we're packing. You won't have to go near the insect cages. <laughs> Now, uh, hand me those aren't poisonous insects. That one there. Uh, this is? Right. Do you, do you have any poisonous ones in here? No? Only Sam, the spider. He's in the glass cage by those books. Oh, I don't want to look. Maybe if you'd look, you wouldn't have such ridiculous ideas. Sam is a nice guy. He just squats and stares. Looks like a wise old man. Oh, if I look, I get sick. All those legs, hairs, a wolf. Okay, okay. Now the notebook, please. Hey, 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 be careful. Why? Well, what's the matter? That machine is very delicate. You almost touched it. Oh, the growth rate? Uh-huh. I don't want that running while I'm gone. Don't worry. I can't wait to get out of here. Uh, let's see now. Have I got everything? Mm, yep. Well, that does it. Come on. After you, meet Cheddar Stricken Beauty. You know, I hope when we get to the university, if I get the appointment, you'll keep your disgust of insects to yourself. A wife is supposed to build up her husband's work. Faculty wives do that all the time. Sir, don't argue with me now. I just can't help the way I feel. Sam should really be fed while I'm gone. Stop it! I'm not going in there. All right. All right. What about Pete the housefly? He's not poisonous. You feed your insects when you get home. Now, hurry up. George will be late. Sure. Well, goodbye. Oh, George, I, I don't want you to leave when you're annoyed like that. I'm sorry, darling. I really love you. But I love my insects, too. <laughs> Just a minute. Coming. Hello, 
Mrs. Martin. Here are the groceries you ordered. Oh, hello, Bill. Right in here. Okay. On the table? Oh, uh, please. Well, I hope the oranges are better this time than they were last. Oh, well, Mr. Ginkelheimer said to tell you that these oranges are swell. Well, I'll know when I squeeze them for breakfast. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bill. Oh, is uh, Mr. Martin home? Mr. Martin? Uh, no, he isn't, Bill. Why? Well, he was going to show me his bug. Oh, you don't want to look at them. But they're dreadful. I find them very interesting. Mr. Martin said he'd take me into his lab today. That's why I delivered your order first. I was anxious to see them. Oh, Mr. Martin was called away suddenly. He got a telegram and had to leave almost at once. But he'll be home tomorrow. Either tomorrow I've got to work at the other store, the one on North Street. Well, in a few days, then. And the bugs will still be here, Bill. Mrs. Martin, would it be too much trouble if you let me peek at them? I never go into Mr. Martin's laboratory. I won't hurt anything. Just peek. I was kind of looking forward to oh, seeing them. Oh, it's a horrid place, Bill, that laboratory. Uh, you wait till Mr. Martin gets home. Sure, Mrs. Martin, if you say so. Well, don't look so glum. What you men see in those revolting creatures, I'll never know. They're scary. They're so big. I feel funny when I look at them. Then Mr. Martin explains about science and stuff, and it's really interesting. Would you like to be a scientist, Bill? I sure would. <laughs> well, I suppose I ought to encourage it. I, I won't take you in, but you can peek. You know where the door is. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Martin. Thanks very much. Uh, but don't touch anything. I won't. I better put these groceries away. Mrs. Martin, help! Mr. Martin, I'm very interested in your growth ray. As dean of science, I want to be certain that this university encourages brilliant young scholars who are experimenting in new fields of research. I understand, At sir. the same time, I must be satisfied that the research will be of fundamental value. Yes, sir. Now, suppose you thought for a while. Tell me about your work. Well, I have always been interested in the effect of environment on organisms. I know the environmental factors, the universal conditions applicable to all organisms. Mm -hmm. For example, sir, uh, air, temperature, humidity, light, and so forth. 
And then I approached each of these conditions from the point of view of its specific effects on organisms. I discovered that the presence or absence of light gave me the widest variance of reaction. Oh, excuse me. In what way the widest variance? When the effects on physical growth change, adaptation. You see, sir, because light is a general term, I broke its definition down into all known rays, infrared, ultraviolet, so forth, and studied reactions of organisms to those rays in every conceivable combination. Now, after two years, I evolved the theory that if certain rays could be combined electronically and concentrated on living organisms for specified periods of time, their growth would be greatly stimulated. And you have constructed such a machine? Yes, I have. The Electrodyna Spectrum, the growth ray machine. And what have you accomplished with it so far? I've multiplied the growth of certain insects many times. My present machine is small and homemade, and its power is not too great. But so far, I've increased the size of a fly to that of a pack of cigarettes. Mm. The size of a spider to that of my fist. Well, what kind of spider? Tarantula. It's a very dangerous and poisonous insect to work with. Well, being a tropical spider, it might be more receptive to light. Its size has tripled. Tell me, Mr. Martin, what is the optimum increase in size that you've so far obtained? About eight times with the fly. The size increase uh, varies with the insect. There's a lot of research yet to be done. Yes, so I can see. Your work certainly excites the imagination. Think of your having the kind of equipment that will permit a 20, 50, 100, or even a thousand-fold increase in an insect's size. Imagine an insect large enough to attack and devour a human being. Imagine this university needing lion cages to contain its giant insects. Well, there's no limit to what new things we could learn about all manner of organisms with a growth rate. Not, not just insects. Yes, that's right. Mr. Martin, I'd like you to stay on another few hours so that we can talk some more. I'd be very happy. Perhaps you'd like to phone your wife, but you'll be a bit late. Thank you, sir. You can use the phone in the other office. And Mr. Martin. Yes. When she asks you how everything's going, you tell her that it's going just fine. <laughs> Being here. Oh, 
George, darling, you know I hated these insects. Yet you built a laboratory in our home. <laughs> oh, a place with the room of terror. Why am I here? Why did things happen to trap me here? Was it because I hated George's work? Was it because I refused to help him with these repulsive creatures? I see them all. His body's like a worm. And I am delighted to see you. The dean phoned and said you were coming over. I think I am the last member of the faculty committee he wants you to see. Oh, sit down, won't you? Thank you, Professor Buckley. Yes, I, I've been going all afternoon from one appointment to the other. And all of us are happy to talk with you. The dean is quite excited about your research, you know. Yes, I'm very pleased about that. Uh, Professor Buckley, I hope you won't think me rude at the beginning of our meeting, but I wonder if I might use your phone. Well, of course, Mr. Martin, is something wrong? No, I don't think so, but I phoned my wife several times to tell her I was staying on all afternoon, and uh, there's been no answer. Oh, I'm sure there's nothing wrong. By all means, call the phone is right there. Thank you. Number, please. I'll let you 84572, and uh, reverse the charges, please. Thank you. There doesn't seem to be any answer. Oh, well, let it ring a few more times. Sorry, sir. There is no answer. Shall I keep trying? Uh, yes, operator. Please keep trying. I'll call you, sir. Thank you. I can't understand it. It's not like Betty to be away so long. <laughs> Oh, 
me! Try to kill me! Ah! You had nothing to fear. What? Well, you see, darling, the adult moth doesn't eat. It has no mouth. Nothing to attack or kill with. Despite its size, Trichophaga tapicella, the clothes moth, is utterly harmless. You mean... You, you mean we could have just shoot it away and opened the window? Of course, dear. The reason it's dead and... Why you could have waited without worrying is that a moth cannot live more than six hours in sunlight. You see, dear, all this horror was unnecessary. <laughs> Next week, a strange drama of a silver rocket and an unseen visitor from space. Be sure to listen to 2000 Plus, radio's different series. 2000 Plus is produced by Dreyer and Winolson Productions Incorporated. In today's cast, Joan Shea portrayed Betty, Larry Robinson was Bill, Ralph Bell was George, and Bill Griffiths was the Dean. Music composed and played by Milton K. Sound, Al April, and George Cooney. Engineer, Bob Albrecht, this is Ken Marvin speaking.